combination machine maintenance. This picture is only to represent what our trucks could look like without proper maintenance. Combination machine definition. A sewer cleaning truck with high pressure water and vacuum systems. The practices explained in this program could apply to any piece of equipment. I will be using pictures of equipment I represent and pictures from other manufacturers to show common points of maintenance. My name is Kerry Alcott. This class has been broken into three separate videos to make viewing time shorter. Program Overview Video number one is about lubrication. Video number two is about daily maintenance. And video number three is about monthly maintenance, component adjustment, and air systems. Monthly maintenance and component adjustment. There are two types of water pumps used in sewer cleaning. One type is a single piston pump. This pump moves its piston very slowly, and that can allow sediment to accumulate inside the water barrel. It is necessary to flush this type of pump. It is suggested that once a week if your water source is heavy with sediment, otherwise no longer than once a month. To flush the pump, open the two ball valves located near the bottom center of the pump. Then close all the other ball valves on the truck. Start the pump and allow the pump to do one stroke in each direction. Water pressure should push any sediment out. Shut pump off and open a ball valve, then close the flushing ball valves. On older models, the pump was at the rear of the truck, and the ball valves were at the rear bumper. These ball valves were an option and might not be on your truck. Bottom in the middle, remove this plug. And on the end block, remove this plug. Then proceed as explained before. Swivel joint packing adjustment. If the swivel joint leaks, remove the locking tab and loosen the packing gland adjustment two notches. Use a hand grease gun and give two pumps of grease. Tighten the packing gland by hand, then use a tool to align the next lock notch and replace the locking tab. Recheck for leaks. When all the adjustment has been taken up, rebuild the swivel joint. Name of internal parts. Chevron V Packing Chevron V Packing Retainer Ring O-Ring Find set screw to remove the ball bearings Screw and lock tab A new swivel joint part number 40052 Repair seal kit 40052-A Hose reel drive chain the chain must be adjusted so the hose on the reel stays tight and reduces parts wear. The hose reel chain will stretch due to wear of each pin and roller in the chain. Too much play in the chain causes the teeth of the sprockets to wear faster or break, as well as loosening the hydraulic motor mounting hardware. Adjust so that there's no more than a quarter inch play. To adjust, the front cover will need to be removed so that you can access the bolt heads. Loosen the four motor bracket nuts. On the side of the motor bracket is a pusher bolt. Loosen the lock nut. Turn pusher bolt to push the motor until desired chain tension. Tighten motor bracket bolts and recheck the tension of the chain. Do not over tighten the chain, you need to have some play. Tighten the lock nut on the pusher bolt to help hold the motor in place. Hose reel mountings. Any hose reel that pivots or slides from the front bumper should be inspected for lubrication as well as loose hardware. Going down the road can be rough. There will be different factory requirements on different designs. Always follow the manufacturer's recommendations.
hose reel slide. On the bottom of the receiver is a grease fitting on both the left and right sides. On older machines, to grease the upper inner bushing, use a spray lithium grease and spray into the upper corners using a tube on the tip of the can to spray the grease inside to the upper bushings on both sides. Newer machines have a grease fitting port. Add a fitting and lube this fitting with the hose reel only halfway extended. Inspect the lower outer bushing for wear and replace when one half the thickness of the upper bushing. When you change the lower bushing, the inner upper bushing will also need to be changed. Lube all lube points and drive shafts. Check the transfer gearbox fluids and shake the drive shafts looking for excessive play in the universal joints and the input or output bearings. There are different manufacturers of transfer gearboxes used. Follow your manufacturer's recommendations for the type of fluid used. Two examples are The OMSI transfer gearbox will have a filter. The Kata transfer gearbox has no filter. The OMSI uses Dextron 3 or a Mercron automatic transmission fluid. The Kata uses an ADW90 gear oil. Lube points for this truck. Transfer gearbox. This is to give you an idea of the number of fittings just in this picture. Triplex pumps have crankshafts just like a car engine. How to check the oil will vary on the type of pump you have. Use mobile gear 630 or equal. You should use a gear oil with no EP additives. EP additives are harmful to brass parts inside the pump. Look for water in the crankcase oil. Do not operate the pump if the oil looks like it has water contamination. It would look like a chocolate milkshake. Depending on the manufacturer, some triplex pumps have a gear reduction box on the input shaft. This gearbox might be a separate oil level check from the water pump power end. Pulley alignment and belt tension. If your water pump or your blower are belt driven, it's important to have the shafts of the driving source square with the driven device. Out of alignment can cause belt slippage, belt glazing, heat due to slippage, pulley wear due to slippage, heat could transfer to a device bearing and cause the bearing to fail. Loss of water pressure and flow from the water pump and a loss of vacuum from the blower. When aligning pulleys, there are two angles we need to adjust. One angle is the offset of the two pulleys. And the other angle is the face of the pulleys are in parallel. If you take a string and hold it to the top of one pulley, and as you bring it close to the second pulley, you want the string to touch all four points at the same time. Pulley on shaft positioning. The pulley should be as close to the output bearing as possible. With the pulley further from the output bearing, we'll put more load on the bearing causing more heat and premature failure. Air system. Compressed air condenses water and it accumulates in the air tanks. Operators are to drain every day on pre-trip inspection. Typical manual air valve. Typical remote cable operated drain valve. The wet tank should be the first tank to drain. The wet tank is the first tank from the compressor. 
the wet tank should be labeled for the operator to know which tank to drain first. Some systems may have a device to help remove water from the air system. Automatic air drain called spitter valves. Air regulator and system protection valve. That is used for auxiliary equipment. Air dryers. There are different types of air dryers. This air dryer has a replaceable desiccant filter element. Air dryers should be serviced annually. Even if an air system has some kind of drying device, it is still the operator's responsibility to check for water in the air tanks. On some combo machines, filters are normally used on units with blowers and transfer cases for the air shifters and the vacuum relief valves. Water trap and air filter. Desiccant dryer. The only servicing required on the silicon gel units is when the desiccant color or moisture indicator has changed from blue, which is dry, to pink, which is wet. When the desiccant is pink, the filter will need to be serviced. This concludes the video training series for combination machine maintenance. From Haker Equipment Company, thank you. Please visit our website and YouTube channel for more training videos to fill your training needs.